broken heart You picked me up, now I'm set apart From the ash I'm born again Forever safe in the Savior's hands You are more than my words could say I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days I'll fix my eyes, follow in your way Oh, yeah. 
the land upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice and pray you're the land upon the throne for you
Hello there, Life Church Global. Hello. It is always a joy to be with you and share the Word of God with you. That's right. Thank you, Pastors Kelsey and John, for this opportunity. Amen. Thank you. We love you both very dearly and your amazing family of God. Yes. We have been brought from darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Through the incorruptible seed, the word of God. We all have immense potential in us. That's right. And we pray that today's word will enable you to explore the potential that is within you. Amen. Be excited and anticipate to unearth all that is within you which you might not know that is there. And let the word of God water it and bring you Amen. bring it to fruition. Amen. Amen. We love you. Hello again. And good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. I bless you and uh, declare over you the grace of God. It is such an amazing, amazing phenomena and experience to know and walk in the grace of God. I can assure you of this. Our own life is a testimony to His grace. Anyway, let me first begin by thanking once again Pastors John and Kelsey for their wonderful trust in me to bring the Word of God, which is sacred. I, I honor it, I exalt it and lift it up. For the Word of God is powerful. It is life transforming. And to entrust a person to teach that word, preach that word, declare that word is something that is always, to me, humbling. And so I want to thank you and thank you and thank you. And thank you for trusting me with your people. It's such an honor, such a privilege. And I bless you for that, that you would continue to have many sons, many sons and daughters manifest and rise up to stand with you. So church today, Life Global, you're in for a treat. I have been treated to something phenomenal and beautiful and powerful. And I want to share it with you because I only give you what I have. I can't give you what I don't have, okay? And anything and everything that I have, I give you. So I hold back nothing. Um, so here we are with the Word of God, and uh, today is phenomenal. <clears throat> today is extraordinary, exceptional. So get ready to explode as you explode the power of the Word of God. Okay, so Genesis chapter 1, my famous favorite book, can never come out of it. Every time you try to come out of it, Abba says, a little longer, a little longer. So here we are, Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth or the face of the waters. And God said, in the actual original Hebrew text, be light, be light. It was a command. Not let there be light. Please, would you allow it to come in? Now, be light. Oh, be light. Sorry, I can't make God's voice. Anyway, and God saw 
the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness God called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day he said be light and there was light but to understand this you got to recognize now there are many who are trying to you know this this particular uh, passage of scripture i have noticed in my studies many bibles some of them like the net bible you know they have only one verse in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth one verse verse one and then the whole of the page is to expound that one verse and there are many other bibles now even the bible that i have not so much but the bible that i have is the spirit filled bible new king james version uh has that one verse and then a whole lot of explanation it's amazing you will be amazed how much time people give on this and there are many explanations of this uh if you want a deeper understanding of what i'm going to share about and it's called the tohu wa bahu effect or as some others pronounce it, hebrew scholars the tohu wa bahu effect so it's not bahu bahu anyway it's it's how you pronounce it but it's the same and when you look at this i think the best explanation that i would encourage you to uh follow and study from would be Kirby Delano another son of mine in the lord but has gone much deeper than i have and has come out with some extraordinary revelations which were hidden there i didn't see it but he pulled it out and he's on a amazing journey with the tohu wa bahu or tohu wa bahu I would stay with the tohu wa bahu because the v tends to be a bit difficult for me. We Sri Lankans have a tendency to use the v as a w. So let's go tohu wa bahu, right? And what does it mean? It has many many meanings. But today I like to take the effect of this word. It's a verse that is missed out because there are many other verses of scripture like John 3:16 uh 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 or 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 or again the whole of Ephesians Ephesians 1:3 Ephesians 1:14 and so on and so forth you go but this has been missed out and I'm so grateful to uh prophet Kirby for bringing it out and explaining it and uh, you like you going to some of his teachings on youtube and you would find that out but the effect of tohu wa bahu is what i want to bring out and to let's go back a little uh, i'm not into theology but as kirby would say uh, he would say a thing like theology so i i want to get into this uh, explaining the effect of it Now it is darkness in our bibles in the english bible but it's deeper than darkness it means void it means waste it means black and here's the first and and many other things but here's the first thing that i would like you to know there is no such thing here in these verses that god created out of nothing the ex nihilo is out of date scholars have now come to recognize that the out of nothing creation by god yahweh is not exactly true because what you see is darkness there was something there was waste there was watery land that's what it all means when it says uh that the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters it was a watery land so there was something and out of that something god 
brought out an extraordinary masterpiece. And that's the effect. You see, many of us have uh, unfortunately got afraid of darkness. Maybe because in our childhood we were made to fear darkness. Or we would say, boo! And then you got afraid or something like that. Or parents would say, now don't go in there, put the light on and all of that. And somehow uh, our neuron patterns began to work in such a way that we began to be afraid of darkness. And so God has to come oftentimes and say, fear not, fear not. Our DNA, by the way, created by God is not to fear. But he has to say that in order for us to come to a place of stillness in whatever situation we are. But darkness has now come and become a symbolic effect of evil. It's taken to be, even, even this very verse is taken and um, kind of uh, destroyed by bringing in all sorts of sensational stuff of the pre-Adamic race and all of that. We're not going into that and I'm not going to get involved. But I simply want to once again emphasize the effect of the Tehuwa Bohu. So, what's it all about? It means simply potential. The effect of the Tehuwa Bahu is potential. Potential which leads to purpose and creation. So let's look at this. God is looking at darkness. He is looking at the watery waste and, and all of the things that are around it. But you know, God does not look at things the way we look at. Our Father does not consider circumstances and issues the way we do. Today there is this, uh, once again, the televangelists are coming out with fear tactics. And once again trying to raise up the end time scenario with the Ukraine war. And all of that. And they're taking out from the Bible the Gog and the Magog and uh, all of that. And sounds pretty good. But it's not true. There is fear being brought in. God does not want to bring an end to his creation. He did not create to bring it to an end. He created to cause it to perpetuate itself. He caused man to live and not die, though man chose to die. And so God is in the business of seeing that there is potential in every situation, potential in every crisis. Right now, what's going on in Ukraine? Oh yes, you look at the sadness and the, and the horror and the tyranny that's going on. And you wonder, what's this? Is this, is, is this what God wants? And that's the question you need to ask. This, does, this, does, does he want this so that the world may come to an end? Is this the way he does it? Beloved, the answer is no. Recently, I was uh, doing a study on anxiety and I learned that even in anxiety, we can thank God for it. You know why? Because God helped me understand that the only ones who do not get anxious, and he said, thank me for that. The only ones who do not get anxious are the dead. The dead do not get anxious. The dead do not fear. And then I said, okay. He said, you are dead to sin and alive to God. So you don't need to be anxious because anxiety is not of your DNA. And so even there, God enabled me to give thanks in everything and for everything. So there's potential in everything as you will see in this very powerful a revelation. So God looks at darkness and what does he do? He doesn't say, oh my goodness, now what am I going to do? What do I do with this? No. He speaks to the potential. Be light. 
So he brings out the logos, the word, which is power, the word of power. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3 speaks of that. And from there, he moves on to bring a beautiful work. Now, a lot of people say that darkness is something that, you know, is evil. No, but God doesn't see it like that. God sees it as potential in order to bring out his creation. And through this chaos, through this, what people call disorder, through this mess of wastage, God forms. And there are three words there in the very first and second chapters. Create, formed, made. Because this is God's work. He doesn't destroy. He creates, he forms, and he makes. And so he takes this potential darkness and out of the chaos, potential. When you get up in the morning, before you get up, your eyes are closed, it's dark. When you get up in the morning, uh, you're still goggy. But don't you realize something? Your morning has potential. Your day has potential if you look for it. And that's what God did. He saw. What did he see? He saw those things that he had spoken into being and he said, it is good. It is good. He formed and he declared it good. And the most extraordinary thing is which I consider absolutely astounding, is that he made man in his own image. Now in his own image would mean that even as he's got the power to bring about potential out of the misery and the murky blackness of any situation, so have you, so have I. And that is the effect of the tohu wa bohu in our lives. So don't be afraid of the darkness. Enter into it because there you will receive an amazing revelation to bring forth light. Because you've come out of darkness into his marvelous light. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Why, why should you fear? Because you are the light. And being the light, you don't have to wait for the end of the tunnel. You are the light. He is with you. He is the light. Both combined together produce a proton and a photon that is amazing. And as you speak, remember this. Even as God spoke, be light. And 186 million miles per second of light just traveled through and out of him. Or 300,000 kilometers. So, when you and I speak, that's the power of the word. And so why fear darkness? It's potential. It's potential for what? For good. This is what we see in Genesis chapter 1. He created man in his own image and then he gave man the power and the authority. And why do you think he said subdue the earth? Why do you think that he said, be fruitful and multiply? Because he believed himself in us to produce that whatever there is, there is potential. And at all times there is potential. And the power and the tohu wa bohu effect is potential. In the beginning, you can say this. In the beginning, God created. And in the beginning of my life, there was potential. And I looked at the potential and I spoke to the potential and I said, and then form it, make it and bring it forth. Now at the beginning, it may seem all nebulous. It may seem all, you know, we are looking at this whole um, podium. We are looking at the Bible. These were all at some time nebula, so they were just in a watery form. This was in pulp. The paper was in pulp. 
but then it was formed you take a seed you don't pray over the seed the seed is not to be prayed over the seed is meant to be planted and it has to die and when it goes into that soil and when you start watering it there is potential in that seed to produce not one but many fruit because what you're doing with it you're not just looking at it as some do and praying over the situation and say oh we got to pray over this situation no do something when you're in the dark do something you could because there is potential it's like kennedy said when you're in the dark don't cry out light a candle john f kennedy yes do something that could bring out a solution even in the darkness because the darkness is there for us to be activated to produce light activated to create and so there's potential and then there is the power of the word that we speak that travels with such speed and then forms and makes because that is who we are we see that uh when david david is for, facing a potential issue the people of israel 1 samuel chapter 14 speaks of that the people of israel are in dilemma they're facing a giant whom they call and they name a giant but when david comes into the scene when he comes chapter uh, chapter 17 not 14 14 is jonathan facing an issue and when he comes he, over here and he sees this he says what's the problem because they are all in darkness they are hiding including saul who is the only man who had a weapon and so when he finds out the problem <laughs> he is kind of laughing in himself and you know what david does david runs towards the potential problem he doesn't run away from it he runs and he faces it when you are facing a potential problem when you are facing a, a potential waste for life when you are seeing something that is dark remember face it and speak to it you facing it is the strategy you speaking to it is the power of the word that brings form and brings structure you are the potential to overcome whatever circumstances are there and david runs and you know the rest of the story is history now there is a sad situation or what i would call an indictment against many many people in second kings chapter 13 and verse 19 uh from verse 15 i believe elisha is sick uh, joash is facing a a problem with some with the army uh the opposing forces and he goes to elisha and elisha says do this open the window and look towards the east where is the east look towards the east and then take an arrow and strike it on the ground you want to know something sometimes and most often god does not open windows or doors for us he points us into the direction and gives us wisdom to see to open the window and see the potential that there is in order for us to overcome did you realize that but unfortunately we have become very uh, pampered christians that we want god to do everything and yes he does for us but he does through us and in us always remember that he points us in the direction of the window and then he says open it and look he gives us direction he gives us wisdom to open that window and see the possibility through the potential 
And so Joash looks at it and then he strikes the ground thrice. And the prophet gets very angry. And he says, why did you strike the ground three times? Now you will only defeat this army thrice. If you struck it six times, you would have defeated them six times over. And there's a verse of scripture there that says, as it's found in the Net Bible, you would, you would see that if only you did, you could. If only we would, we could. And there are many who are stuck there. They are stuck in that question. Oh, if only we could. Oh, if only we did. Oh, if only that. Oh, if only this. Beloved, rise out of the only would into I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Beloved, this is not about a dominion theology. This is the Bible. It's a victorious living. And where are we living? In the darkness. Today, the world is in darkness. Uh, 2020, it was a time of darkness. But we did not handle that properly, so that's over. Now, we got to do what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3. Forget the past, press on. Move forward. And so, shall we look at the window that God has pointed us towards? And shall we not see the power of that enemy and darkness and all of those things? Let us see it as potential to manifest the glory of God, to release the power of God, to release the victory of God and to rise up and see potential for good because that's what we find in Genesis chapter 1. For good and then at the end he says very good. The whole creation that you have is very good. It's not bad. It's good. Unfortunately, Many theologians and many people who try to interpret the Bible, try to make the world bad and evil and all of the things. They are more dedicated to glorify the devil and give him more credit, not glorify, but give him more credit than what God in Christ has done. We are not devil conscious, we are Christ conscious. And listen to this even in the life of Jesus. Every moment of his life when he walked, he was the light and wherever he walked, in him was the life and the life was the light of man. John chapter 1. And this word, the Logos, the same word that was spoken and 186 million miles per second of word power came out. This same word, became flesh. Now listen to this. Didn't dwell merely among us. In verse 14 it says, dwelt in us. Unfortunately, we have spent too much of time, time with the among us. He dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. No, he dwelt in us. And today Christ in us, the hope of glory. The word has become flesh. The same word that spoke, be light, is now in us and is manifesting the glory. And so we see Jesus walking into various situations that are dark. Dark. And I can go on from the whole of John and the various Gospels, but just to give you one thing. He walks and there is a blind man, John chapter 9. There's a blind man. And you know what? The disciples ask a question. They are in darkness, so they ask a question. Who sinned, this man or his parents? The karmic principle. Who sinned? That's a, a problem with us, right? When people fail, when people are going through 
dark situations we want to analyze as to why they are going through this why the addiction why the alcoholism why the joblessness why the divorce why this why that hey listen none of this and jesus sees potential he sees tohuwabo yes but the tohuwabo is an opportunity to create the darkness is an opportunity to create so he enters into the darkness he's not afraid to enter he stepped down from his glory and he came and now he's not afraid to enter into darkness don't be afraid of darkness don't be afraid because the darkness is an opportunity for us to manifest the light and that's why in isaiah it says in the midst of thick darkness verse 3 isaiah 60 in the midst of thick darkness his light will shine wow and so beloved in the beginning god created that's actually a title it's a statement but it's also a title the next few verses manifest all that he did He entered into the darkness he looked at the darkness and he said my thoughts my plans perfect be light and voila and from there onwards he took it on and now comes the light of the world the son of god yeshua mashiach and then he looks at this blind man and he says no neither this man nor his parents but that the glory of god may be made manifest and then he tells i told you that god points us towards a window of opportunity god points us towards a window he tells this man hey there's a window there i'm pointing to you now go through that go down there dip yourself in this pool and come back and sometimes we find it hard to do those things because we want the touch and there are times he will touch us we want the touch of god and we want to be healed while we are seated there the man in chapter 5 john chapter 5 he wants god to raise him up and jesus says hey no you want to be healed take up your mat and walk oh i can't he's in darkness but god sees potential and he says take up your mat and walk. and he does it because the word of power the word of power into the tohuwa bohu the tohuwa bohu is the condition beloved for the effect the tohuwa bohu is the condition the waste the uh darkness the void the wateriness is the condition for you and me to glorify. And so now watch this. Hands take hold of him. And he wants they want to destroy him. And they do. And they kill him. And they put him into darkness. The tomb. He's back into darkness. What does he do in darkness? Well, if you read Jonah, you would see what he does in Jonah. He you would see what Jonah does. He praises God in the darkness, in the whale. He's not there crying and weeping and saying, "Oh my goodness, why did I do this? I should never have done this. I never should have gone down to Joppa." Now he praises God. And as he praises God, woof! Out of darkness because the power of the word produces life. And so Jesus is there for 3 days and 3 nights in darkness in the tomb. And you can say whatever you want to say and people can say he went down to hell and he did this and he did that. I just want to believe that he was praising God because he believed God. He knew what he had come for. He had come to enter into the tohuwa bohu. 
He had come to see the Tohuwa Bahu, the effect of it. And he saw it in all its fullness as he was there in darkness of death. And what did he do? He came forth. Out of the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose the victor of the dark domain. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. And now he's given you reigning power. So that the, out of the Tohuwa Bahu, in that darkness, the effect of it. I'm not talking about the theology, okay? I'm not talking, and, and that again, I say you could go to Kirby and you can learn from him because I go to him and I'm learning about it, the meditations and all of that in these days. I would encourage you to go. But I'm talking to you of the effect and the practical principle of the theology so that we can live a life that is free from being dominated in the fear of darkness and allow the darkness, embrace it, accept it, receive it, whatever form it comes in and then speak Life with the word of power, the Logos, the truth. Face your potential with truth and courage and power and faith and see the creation not out of nothing. Because darkness is not nothing. Darkness is something. Bring forth life. And this is our work today as a church, that in the midst of thick darkness, with all the wars going around us, with all the preparation to do various things in order to cause the world to be a little bit wobbly, be still and know that He is God. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. First stand still, then go forward. Remember this Psalm 46 and make a choice, make a choice. What does Psalm 121 says? I will lift up mine eyes. I will. That's a choice. From whence come, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. What did he make it out of? Darkness. And so why should I be afraid? The Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid of? Psalm 27. When my enemies come up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled. That's what it says. They stumbled. That's what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane in the darkness. When they came up against the light, they stumbled. Because in Him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light was not comprehended. The darkness could not comprehend the light. So beloved, I can go on and on and on, but I want you to know that we are living in a beautiful world. Yes, there is darkness, but even in the midst of thick darkness, there is beauty. If you can only see it, it's your perception. When you look at black, what do you think? You think of evil, devil, Dragon, Ooh, no, 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 no. Why don't you think of creation? Now that's what was in the beginning, right? And God looked at darkness and he didn't say, hmm, I'm going to have a problem. Oh no, he did have a problem, right? In chapter three, but there was potential in that problem. What was the potential? His plan was working out in spite of the fact that humanity was not wanting to walk in line with God. Every time you see that, he doesn't see problems, he sees potential. And so in chapter three, there's potential. What is it? The seed, the seed. And what does he do with the seed? He doesn't pray over it. He doesn't prophesy over it. He plants it. He plants it in man. As he planted humanity in the garden, he planted the seed in man. 
And that seed produced, as Savi said, the incorruptible word. And that incorruptible life produces the power for potential in order to bring about solution. We are the solution of the world. We are the light of the world. And we shall never be afraid of darkness. Remember, darkness is only a means for creation. If you see it like that, then your whole perception and your whole mindset, your neuron patterns begin to change. Something happens and you get wired because you've been wired unto greatness. You've been wired in a way that enables you to bring about life so that you can speak to the dead and say, come alive. You with me? We need to come here to this place. We're not yet here. Sad to say, because you know, we are saying if only we could, we're just like Joash. If only we could, we would. We could and we will. We will fire that arrow and we will see the enemies flee. We won't flee. The enemies will flee. Because great is he that is in us and he that is of this world. So I want you to think of your problems today. Sickness. Uh, loneliness. Financial crisis. Things that you have come to the edge and things are exploding or exploding. You're reaching your goal and then poof, voila, it's gone. And there seems to be a cycle, a pattern all the time. Oh no, beloved. You know, God's given me some, a, a, a powerful message for the church and I'll be teaching it as I go on. The power of his word, but to look at life through the eyes of grace, through the eyes of the word, through the eyes of God and see how God sees. And then when he sees potential, he uses it. That is potential in you, beloved. That is potential in you. Your financial crisis is a moment of potential for you to come out and be free from financial worry. The sickness, whatever it is, there is potential in you. You have potential. I have potential. No matter what the issue is, there is potential. You having a problematic child? That's not problematic. That's potential. Look at the potential. Don't see the giant, see God, as David saw. Don't see the enemy as Joash saw. But see the potential and strike as much as you want so that as much as you strike, you will receive. Are you with me? So I want you to bring your problems right now, whatever it is. And I don't want you to even consider it a problem. Consider potential. Romans 12 says, that as we worship God and as we are transformed, we will prove what is the perfect will of God. And the perfect will of God for you and for me is to be able to be creative. We are a creative power. We are a creative force and we will create. We don't need to cry out and beg and be perennial beggars. We can be creators in Christ Jesus. So Father, right now, I declare over everyone who is listening, wherever they are in the world, that they would receive the wonderful knowledge. Together with you, they are creators because they are made in the image of you. And that darkness is only condition that has been made so that out of it will come life. Even as you did so, as you looked in the beginning and you saw darkness over all the earth and you spoke, be light. 
potential. You confronted potential with the word. Let them, let each one of them confront potential with the word and form and create and make as you did. As you spoke, let there be light. As you said, let us make man. And as you gave man that authority and that power, so right now, once again, over these people, awakening them, the power for potential. So that through that, whatever it is, they will come through. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Bless you. Enjoy. Enjoy. And hey, I trust you will be there to uh, cheer on our leader and his wife. And everybody else from Wow Sri Lanka and International. Come on, let's go. And let's speak life. Let's cheer life. Let's say victory is ours. And let's see them come home. Bless you. Love you. Take care. Thank you.